shopping at the Quad City Grocery Mart. Did you find everything that you need? Yep, I did. Just getting the essentials today. I see you grabbed the, the last of our toilet paper and a good looking bunch of apples here. Yes, I did. You know what they say, an apple a day keeps the COVID away. <laughs> I haven't heard that one yet. That's good. Uh, let's see what your total is today. $150, please. $150, what? The price of our products has gone up quite significantly these last few weeks. It's three apples and some toilet paper. How can it be $150? I don't know. Some people would say it's worth it. Well, that was a funny example of the cost of some of our needs today. What Jesus did for us on the cross cost him a lot more than a roll of toilet paper and a couple of apples. Yeah, that's right, Kelsey. Why don't we tune in to hear Joe talk a little bit about uh, how Jesus paid it all for us on the cross. Are you ready? And... Hi, my name is Joe, and today we're going to be talking about forgiveness. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you, Addie. Wow. Ah! Ah! I can't do it. Oh, my apples have went under the car. I have to get another apple because it fell. My name is Joe, and I get the privilege today to speak with you guys about words from the cross. Right? And we're going to dive right into it. It starts off in Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through 38. And while you're skimming through your Bible trying to find that verse, it's in the New Testament. Um, I'm going to set up the story a little bit. It starts off with Jesus. Um, Jesus is doing miracles. He's healing people. He's letting people see. He's like opening people's eyes. He's letting the blind. He's like raising people from dead. Right? He's doing these miracles. And while he's doing this, people are like, he has to be the Messiah. He has to be the one that we heard about. He is the chosen one, the true king. And at this time, they uh, in Jerusalem, he strolls through on a donkey and they begin to put palm leaves down. This is the type of a ceremony you would give a king at the time. And the religious leaders did not like that one bit. They didn't understand, like, Jesus' sauce was too much for them. Like, he had a little bit of different spice in, in, in his sauce, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so they, they weren't used to that ingredient. And that's what set them up to begin the plot to kill Jesus. And that leads us into the crucifixion uh, where we're at now. So let's join me as we dive into the scriptures right now and look in Luke 23, um, starting at verse 32. The two other men, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him when they came to the place called the Skull. They crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. And Jesus said to them, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine and vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, then save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. And what we're going to be focusing on is verse 34, which talks about forgiving. Who is he wanting to forgive? Who are these people he's talking about? He's talking about the, the Roman soldiers who was mocking him. He's talking about the people that sang praises of Hosanna and said, he is the Messiah. He is the chosen one of God. He is the true king. And their king that they were thinking that he was was something in the flesh is a, a, a ruler on earth. His dimension is way further than that and, wide, and wider. Now, Jesus knew the price that he had to pay. And it, he did it because he loves us so much. It's, it's a love that we cannot even fathom. Just imagine, you have all the money that you could ever want, 
cars, money, jewelry, shoes. You can do whatever you want to do with it, right? Um, but you have this grand amount of money. And basically, it's either dumping it all off in the river so that nobody can have it. Or do you lay it down purposefully so that the next person gets all of it? And this is what Jesus does. He lays down his life willingly. Nobody takes it from him. Nobody forces him from him. They try to. They can never catch him up. He allows this to happen. And, and Jesus, knowing what's going to happen, still follows through with God's plan to bring us forgiveness. And, and sometimes I think when we think about the cross, we don't think about the entirety. We hear, oh yeah, Jesus... He died on the cross for my sins. But it, I believe it's deeper than that. Yes, he did die on the cross for our sins. But when we think about the pain that he went through, right? Jesus is going through excruciating pain with the 39 lashes to his back. With the insults that he keeps on getting from people. The crown of thorns on his head. The nails in his wrists and his feet. But I believe we're, we're, we're not seeing the full, full picture. So let's look at um, Isaiah 53, verse 5. It says, He was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be made whole. And he was whipped so that we could be healed. Now, when we think about those things, when I think about those things, I think about fights. And, and all of us have seen different fights, whether it be on YouTube, Facebook, on your news feed, whatever it is, World Star, whatever it is. You've seen those type of fights, MMA. Now, with, with, with those fights, right, people might be going out, but they're getting all bloody, bloody and bruised and stuff. And that doesn't even compare to Jesus' pain that he went through physically. Jesus suffered a gruesome death. And these are facts. Once he gets up on the cross, the first thing he says is written is, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. That blows my mind. He's forgiving people that are already persecuting him and executing him in this position. As he's calling out to God, that means we have a great opportunity to call out to God also. Even on our weakest moments, when we feel like we can't make it. When they say Jesus is saving others and he can't save himself, in the midst of all of that, he was still saving us by staying there. There is more power in that to stay there than get off the cross. He carried the weight of the world on his shoulders, right? carry the weight of the world on his shoulders and while carrying that weight has anybody have ever had a loved one that they're really concerned about their well-being and how they're doing anybody like that right and imagine the whole world you're taking on all that concern because you love this person and this is what Jesus does at the cross with those few words, Father, forgive them. Now take a moment to ask yourself, how compassionate are you to forgive others? Ask yourself, how is God using me to forgive others? Whether the person is, is done right by me or wronged me. Because Jesus loved us so much he went through a horrible death that we might be free. Thank you. Hey guys, it's Ashley and I'm here bringing you your take home for the week. Shout out to Joe for that awesome main course and those bomb juggling skills. Got to give you your props. You did that.
All right, moving on. This week with Words from the Cross, we're talking about forgiveness. We have an amazing example of what it means to forgive in the midst of pain through our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's literally on the cross in Luke 23 and 34, and I'm about to paraphrase this, so y'all bear with me, but he's on the cross providing and offering mercy to those who have been persecuting him, to the people who have been spitting on him, beating him, um, wrongfully, it's just coming at him sideways. He's offering mercy to them. And he says, Lord, forgive them for they, they know not what they do. They, have, they don't know what they're doing. They, they have no idea what it is that they're doing right now. And maybe that's the case for you. Maybe you've suffered pain. Maybe you've suffered hurt from those that, that didn't know what they were doing. They were just going about doing what it was that they felt they were supposed to do based upon society or their peers or the hurts that they have faced. Maybe, who knows? But you've suffered this pain and you have an example of what it, what it looks like to forgive them. Even smack dab in the middle of feeling the pain with nails in his hands, in his feet. He's offering these people forgiveness. I want to challenge you. We're quarantining, um, whether it's through your phone, whether it's an actual piece of paper, I want you to write down the hurts that you have experienced, okay? And while you're writing them, consider yourself giving those hurts and those pains over to God. He hears you. He sees you. He knows what it is that you're facing. Give those over to God and then offer forgiveness to the person that has hurt you it's easier said than done but it's much easier when you go to our god who hears you in the midst of what you're feeling give him those cares and ask him to help you along the way all right guys let's do this let's walk in forgiveness let's be free tune in next week for another take of words from the cross we love you guys bye